Well, good morning, High Life, and uh, welcome to our broadcast. Thank you so much for joining us. So should I say, uh, Shana Tova Umetuha, uh, which means have a happy and sweet uh, new year. Of course, we know what season this is. Uh, this is Rosh Hashanah, um, where we celebrate uh, the Jewish uh, New Year. Uh, Rosh Hashanah began um, on uh, Friday, the 15th of September, ends tonight. And uh, of course, it's, an, it's a new year, and the celebrations began on Friday. Um, in 10 days' time, on the 24th uh, to the 25th, we have Yom Kippur. So in the Jewish calendar, you know, there are 10 days of, of penitence or repentance uh, culminating in in the, the Passover. And of course, this is very significant uh, because it, it, it speaks concerning the fact that the year begins, uh, our new season begins with identifying uh, who we are in Christ, uh, recognizing that everything that we are going to enjoy um, of the kingdom of God uh, begins in the new creation, begins in redemption and the power of redemption. You know, the, the Jewish calendar is very significant uh, because um, all the feasts of the, of the Jewish calendar, uh, the, the times of the feasts were specifically given by the Lord. Now, we know that everything that happens on earth uh, mirrors something significant that is happening in heaven. Um, and a new year um, signifies a shift uh, so definitely, uh, things that are, are being celebrated on earth reflect a seasonal change uh, that heaven is announcing. So as the 10 shot blasts of the shofar are heard to start uh, Rosh Hashanah, in heaven there is also a divine uh, announcement about a shift in season. A shift in season. Um, you know, the, um, the, the year 2023... Is a is a significant uh, a significant year, uh, and and as we as we press into this shift in season, it's so important that we listen to what the Lord is saying. You know, with us at High Life, the um, over the last few years, there's been a, a verse of scripture, which has been uh, which the Lord has given us uh, over and over again, and that's in Isaiah forty three, and uh, Isaiah forty three verse eighteen. It says, stop dwelling on the past. Stop dwelling on the past. And, and honestly, I believe that everything that the Lord has been saying to us uh, finds its fulfillment and its culmination in this year and in this season. It says, stop dwelling on the past. Don't remember those former things. I am doing something brand new, something unheard of. Even now, it sprouts and grows and matures. Do you perceive it? The last few years... For us has been the Lord uh, preparing us for this and helping us to perceive this new season. You know, Isaiah 42 actually gives an indication of the kind of season that the Lord is leading us into. In verse 16 of, of Isaiah 42, and then verse 19, it says, I will walk, um, I will walk the blind by an unknown way and guide them on paths they've never traveled. I will smooth their difficult road. And just to be clear on who he's speaking to in verse 19, it says, Who is as blind as my servant Israel, or as deaf as the messenger I send? Who is as blind, blind as my covenant friend, as blind as Yahweh's servant? So he's saying that he's leading us in a new direction. He's leading us in a way we have never been before, that we are unfamiliar with. And this past few years has been him preparing us for it and letting us know that indeed a shift is happening, a transformation is happening. You know, um, uh, and I believe that this Rosh Hashanah actually, uh, actually culminates that. You know, I feel that uh, recently I was listening to um, uh, a, a broadcast by Song Bei, uh, where she was uh, given a prophetic word regarding uh, September 2023, and she mentioned that it's the it's a season of a divine a divine reset, a divine reset, and and she quotes from Mark 2:21, where he says, "No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, or else the new piece uh, pulls away from the old, and the tear is made worse." And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, or else the new wine bursts the wineskins, uh, and the wine is spilled, and the wineskins are ruined. But new wine must be put into new wineskins. So the Lord has taken time to prepare us, 
to ensure that we have new wine skins for the new wine he wants to pour and we have um you know we we, we don't so that new cloth is not is not um um uh, stitched onto an un uh, unshrunk cloth otherwise everything will tear and the new wine skins will burst so he has been preparing us for what he has prepared for us he has been telling us over and over again that it is the season of the new he's been asking us to perceive it he's been giving us revelation to help us begin to make that transition so he can pour to, into us uh, the new wine that he has ordained uh, for us so Rosh Hashanah uh, uh, this new year uh, speaks about a shift um, a shift that the Lord is is, hap is is doing and a transitioning that he's taking us through and he has prepared us for this you know the the according to the Jewish calendar the year is uh, five seven uh, eight four and I was reading something on um, on uh, on uh, prophet Charlie Shams um, uh, feed where he says five seven eight four is the year of the open door the year of the open door um, a season of divine favor and unprecedented opportunities it's the year of the open door, you know, but in order to walk through the open door, you have to be willing to leave the old, okay? Uh, for us at High Life, uh, 2023 is the year of grace to build, uh, which is exactly the same as saying a year of unprecedented opportunities because grace is God's empowerment to do his will, okay? But in order to be, uh, to experience that grace and be beneficiaries of that grace, we have to be ready to leave the old we have to be ready to leave the old we have to be ready to let go of the old season repent as it were which is what is happening during the season of rosh hashanah uh this 10 days before yom kippur repent of the old which means let go of the old patterns um he said who is blind but my servant okay i'm gonna lead you down a way you have not been before so we must be willing to let go of our old patterns let go of our, our old norms and embrace what he is revealing you know um, um, uh, prophet Charlie uh, looks at those numbers 574 and of course 8 is the number of of new beginnings and uh, and and uh, the number 4 which is Dalit in the Hebrew uh, is, a, is a symbol because in Hebrew characters are, uh, are actually symbols okay so the the Dalit is a symbol of a door or a path so prophetically, he, he sees that this year, uh, three, 5784, is a year of new things, new doors, new opportunities um, in the realm of the spirit. God is going to take us into uh, new dimensions. And, and, and the people that will experience that are people who have been, who are ready to let go of the old, let go of the old. And that is why this series that we've been doing um, talking about the anatomy and operation of the new uh, new creation is also so significant uh, because we begin in our adventures in God by embracing who we are, living in the true identity of who we are. Okay, that is where it begins. You can't go. You can only go as far as um, you consider yourself to be worth going, as it were. Um, your identity determines everything, okay? And not just your identity, but your understanding of your identity. And that's what the Lord has been, um, uh, has been patiently, um, you know, and graciously uh, emphasizing to us over and over again. And we're, we're getting the light of it. We're letting go of old norms and old patterns, okay? And, and moving into the new. So today, uh, as you know, for a few months, we've been talking about the um the 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 nature of the new creation we talked about righteousness we've talked about uh some new creation realities uh speaking about union with christ and and um and fruitfulness uh but today what we're going to do is we're going to have communion together okay and communion is also another very important ordinance in the new testament uh and the power of communion is is uh to usher us into um, a an understanding and experience of the things that we have been discussing. So we're gonna we're gonna have communion together today, and um, I'd like us to start by looking at First uh, Corinthians uh, eleven twenty three to twenty six real quick. 
just to set the background of this. Um, the Apostle Paul in verse 23, um, read from the New King James, it says, For I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, uh, which is broken for you. Okay, do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner also he took the cup after suffered, saying, uh, The cup of this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Um, this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim uh, the Lord's death until he come. Now, of course, the, the Lord Jesus revealed uh, the ordinance or the power of the ordinance of communion to Paul, the apostle, uh, by revelation. I mean, Paul was not there in the, you know, in the upper room. Uh, where they had communion together, but but Jesus thought it important enough to give Paul not just the um, the account of the event, but also the significance of the event. He said, everything that was done at the cross was for our benefit. Okay, so the ordinance of uh, of communion is to um, appropriate those benefits because benefits unappropriated might as uh, as uh, are the same as benefits not received okay so until you appropriate the benefits it will just be something that is down on paper or something that is down in your account or something that is is yours but you never benefited from so communion is a powerful way using uh, physical symbols to release our faith and appropriate the power of what has been made available to us. And there are two key words that convey that. You know, he said, um, do this in remembrance of me. He repeats that uh, twice. He says, do this in, or he repeats that. He said, do this in remembrance of me when you break the bread. Do this in remembrance of me, in remembrance of me when you drink the cup. Uh, the word remember is the, is the Greek word anamnesis, um, anamnesis, which speaks about recollection or calling to the mind. Recollection or calling to the mind. So if you are going to, when we break bread, we must recollect and call to the mind. Okay? Uh, so it's a time of meditation. It's a time of remembering what the broken body signifies and what the cup signifies. It's a time of recollection, it's a time of appropriation. The second word that is important there is, he says, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim, you proclaim, okay, that's cantangelo, you proclaim, uh, you are announcing the death of the Lord, okay? So you are, you are remembering why he died, um, you are recalling why he died. And remember, he died for us. Okay? You are recalling that he died for you. And then you are announcing that. Okay? You are making a confession. You are making a confession. You are making a declaration based on your understanding of what he has done for you and me. So it's a time of meditation. Okay? Where we are remembering. We are recalling. We are appropriately. We are appropriating and we are muttering and declaring to our bodies. We are making that announcement physically so that every atom of our body, um, uh, through the vibration of the sound, uh, every atom of our body hears what we're saying. We are putting ourselves in that understanding of what Christ has done and we are appropriating it as ours. We are announcing it to ourselves. We are announcing it to our bodies. We are announcing it to our minds. We're speaking to our hearts and then we are declaring to principalities and powers that this is what I have. This is who I am legally based on the broken body. And then we are eating the bread. Um, we are, we are, as we are assimilating that bread, we are releasing our faith and we're saying as I swallow this bread, I am receiving um, the understanding into every part of my being. This is who I am. This understanding is becoming part of me. It's been digested in my spiritual man and is becoming one with me. It's part of my spiritual makeup. It is part of my, it is my, it's speaking about my identity and this is how I walk from this day forward. So it's a very powerful uh, practice as we do it with understanding. Yeah. So prepare the bread. If you haven't got the bread, 
you know pause the video and go get bread um go get a um a um uh some liquid you can get orange juice glass of wine whatever go get some liquid and sit down uh and we're gonna break bread together we're gonna have five segments of this all right so have uh, have enough bread that you can break into five parts um, because after each segment we're going to eat the bread and we're going to release our faith and make some uh, declarations okay so go get the elements and then we'll pray together all right welcome back let us bow our heads for a word of prayer father we're so thankful uh, because you are in us uh, your word says that he that joins himself to the lord is one spirit with him uh, lord we thank you because we are one spirit with you uh, you are here, you are in us, you are among us. Uh, Holy Spirit, we thank you because you light our candles and enlighten our darkness. It is you that makes the kingdom real to us. Um, as we eat the bread and, and drink the cup today, we thank you for the provision of these elements. We thank you for sending Father, sending Jesus to come and die for us. He is the true bread. Um, he is the blood of the covenant. Um, uh, he is the testator of the new covenant. So, Father, we're so thankful for the living bread um, that you made available for the salvation of our lives. So, Lord, now as we spend time in your word, we, we, um, we thank you because as we meditate, it's only the spirit that can give on that can bring an unveiling and a transformation but we make ourselves available uh to the power and trans to, to the transformative power of the holy spirit um to to reveal to us um even who christ is in us so we give you thanks lord in jesus name we pray amen amen okay you know so again it's a time of of meditation uh, and i'm reminded of uh, philemon 6 that says that the sharing of our faith uh, the fellowship of our faiths becomes effective as we acknowledge every good thing that's in us in Christ. So a time of meditation, a time of communion is a powerful time of acknowledging, okay, epignosis, embracing the unveiled understanding of who Christ is in us and, 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 and fellowshipping with that so that there can be a movement of the power of God on the inside that brings through experience of uh, the life of Christ in our daily operations. So, like I said, we're going to meditate on on five. Um, we're going to have five segments to this, and everything we do um, during our thirty minutes of sharing is is like a is like a seed. Okay, uh, you have this recording. Um, you can review it at any time, and and you can use it to break bread at any time, um, and you would you know and, and spend as much time as you want. Um, so five segments. Now for the first segment, we're going to focus on the new man. Okay. Focus on the new man. And, and I've got three verses of scripture here. Um, I typically meditate on one verse, but I, I'm just bringing segments of three verses together, um, for this segment on the new man and, um, and we'll be able to use all three. Okay. The first is just the first line from Colossians three verse one, where it says Christ's resurrection is your resurrection too christ's resurrection is your resurrection too and then first corinthians fifteen forty nine says once we were we carried the likeness of the man of dust that's the first adam but now let us carry the likeness of the man of heaven Okay, the likeness of the man of heaven. So we have um, a different likeness. Um, it's not the likeness of Adam, it's the likeness of the man of heaven. Christ's resurrection is your resurrection too. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, the Bible says, if anyone is enfolded into Christ, he has become an entirely new creation. All that is related to the old order has vanished. Behold, everything is fresh and new everything is fresh and new everything is fresh and new christ's resurrection is your resurrection too if you are in christ if you are enfolded into christ you are a new an entirely new creation all that is related to the old order has vanished everything Behold, look, 
everything is fresh and new. Christ's resurrection is your resurrection too. Once we carry the likeness of the man of dust, but now we carry the likeness of the man of heaven, of the man of heaven, of the man of heaven. I'd like us to take the bread, uh, a portion of the bread. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want us to, um, as we eat the bread, you are, this bread is his body. Um, so this revelations that we have shared, um, see them as the po this portion of the bread. This is why he died. This is part of why he died. Um, as we eat it, as we break it down in our mouths, let us meditate on the fact that Christ's resurrection is your resurrection too. We were totally identified with him in his death and totally identified with him in his resurrection. Okay? He died for us and we are now one with him in his resurrection. We have his nature now. Christ's resurrection is my resurrection too. The way Christ raised, was raised from the dead never to die again. I have been brought into oneness with him and I have the life of God, never to die, never to be separated from him again. Christ's resurrection is my resurrection too. I have a new identity, not after the old Adam, the first Adam. I have a new identity after the likeness of the man of heaven. Um, by architecture, um, I am heavenly architecturally. Christ's resurrection is my resurrection to the old order. Um, I'm, in, I'm an entirely new creation. All related to the old order has vanished. Behold, everything is fresh and new. Let us eat together while we meditate on these things. You know, feel free to discuss this. You can feel free to pause this and discuss it for a bit in your um, in your house churches. And after after discussion, I'd like us to take this confession together. Say, Heavenly Father, I give you thanks. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. Thank you because in Christ, everything concerning my old order, <clears throat> everything concerning my old identity, my old successes, my old failures, everything concerning that is over. Christ's resurrection is my resurrection too. I am raised to a new life in Christ. I am one with him. I have the image of the man of heaven, not a man from the earth. My primary identity is heavenly, not earthly. I am a spiritual being in union with Christ. I am a spiritual being in union with Christ. His resurrection is my resurrection to every aspect of my life is resurrected. Every aspect of my life comes under the authority, the government, and the influence of the life of Christ. Hallelujah. Christ's resurrection is my resurrection too. I am a new man. I am a new man in Christ. I have his nature. I have his identity. I am his workmanship created in Christ for good works. I can function like Christ functions because his resurrection is my resurrection too. The next segment, we're going to look at um, a part of the nature of this new man. I'd like us to open to Ephesians 4, verse 23 to 24. Um, it says, Now it's time to be made new, 
by every revelation that's been given to you and be transformed as you embrace the glorious Christ within as your new life and live in union with him. For God has created you all over again in his perfect righteousness and you now belong to him in the realm of true holiness. God has recreated you all over again. He didn't renew you. He didn't just forgive you. He recreated you all over again in his perfect righteousness. And you belong to him in the realm of true holiness. Look at Romans 10 verse 4. It says, For the Christ is the end of the law, and because of him, God has transferred his perfect righteousness to all who believe. God has transferred. So righteousness is not something you aspire for. Righteousness is not something that you grow in. Um, righteousness, according to the word, is something that God transfers. God transfers his perfect righteousness to us who believe. So through faith, we have received perfect right standing with God. Perfect right standing with God. And he was transferred to us when we gave our lives to Jesus. Um, verse 23 says we should, be, uh, we should be transformed by embracing the revelation that has been given to us. What's the revelation? Christ within as our new life. Um, and the fact that he has created us in his perfect righteousness. And now we belong to him in the realm of holiness. God has created you in Christ in his perfect righteousness. You are perfectly righteous. Um, you are perfectly righteous. In Romans 1, one translation talks about how God, through the gospel, has shown how men, um, I believe it's Lovell's translation, has shown how he has made men as perfect or as righteous as himself. As righteous as himself. God transferred his righteousness to us. His perfect righteousness. We're as we're we're in right standing with God in the same way and to the same degree that Jesus is in right standing with God. Let us break the bread together and assimilate this. I'm in right standing with God in the same way as Jesus is in right standing with God because God, God transferred his perfect righteousness to us who believe. He, perfect, he transferred his perfect righteousness to you when you believe. The Bible says that he recreated you all over again in his perfect righteousness. Hallelujah. You know, humility is accepting what God says about you. So, Lord, we accept what you say about us. Thank you because this new creation, I'm a new creation in Christ. The old is totally gone. My old life is totally over. I have a new life in Christ. And through faith in Jesus Christ, you have transferred your perfect righteousness to me. Your perfect righteousness to me. I've been recreated in God's righteousness. Lord, I thank you. I accept that I'm in right standing with you. I'm, I'm in right standing with you because I have your nature. I have the same nature of rightness and the same nature of holiness as God himself. I accept this. I accept this. I accept this. That I am as righteous as Jesus is righteous. For the only righteous I have is his righteousness. I accept this. I assimilate this into my being, into every aspect of my being today. I receive it, I assimilate it, I see myself, I see myself as, as, as having the same rightness as Christ. I see myself as standing in the presence of God without any sense of guilt, but with a sense of full acceptance and joy of the Father. The Father is joy, is, is food of joy every time he sees me. Because he sees me wrapped in Christ. He sees me wrapped as one with Christ uh, in his perfect righteousness. And therefore, I can function in the kingdom 
uh, in freedom and in liberty with the full acceptance and endorsement of my father because I am one with Christ. The father has transferred his perfect righteousness to me. Hallelujah. And this is my permanent state. This is my permanent state through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us, um, let us open to Galatians uh, chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Um, we're going to look at the aspect of union. Union with him. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, and then 1 Corinthians um, 6, 17. Galatians 2, 20 says, My old identity has been co-crucified with Messiah and no longer lives. For the nails of his cross crucified me with him. And now the essence of this new life is no longer mine. For the anointed one lives his life through me. We live in union as one. My new life is empowered by the faith of the Son of God who loves me so much that he gave himself for me. And he dispenses, he dispenses his life into me. He dispenses his life into me. And in um, 1 Corinthians six seventeen, it says, For the one who joins himself to the Lord... The one who joins himself to the Lord is mingled into one spirit with him. The one who joins himself to the Lord is mingled into one spirit with him. You know, back to Galatians 2.20, it says, My old identity no longer lives. Okay? There isn't a coexistence of the old man and the new man in me. Just as the crucifixion of Christ led to his death, and he died, he died Spiritually, he died physically. The crucifixion was complete. In like manner, my crucifixion in him was complete. The old man died, never to be raised again in its current state. My old man, my old identity is gone. My old identity is gone. My old identity is gone. The, the nails that crucified Christ were effective and I was completely co-crucified with him. My old life is gone. Okay? My old life in terms of his weaknesses, in terms of its strengths. My old life is gone. But I have a new life. But that new life is no longer mine. Because I'm totally, I was totally identified with his death. So the new life I have um, is one in which the Savior lives his life through me. We live in union as one. 1 Corinthians 6, 17 says that he that is joined to the Lord, or he that joins himself to the Lord is one spirit with him. One spirit means that you can't tell where I end and where he begins. We are one together. We are indivisible. You can't separate us. There can't be a divine divorce. Okay, You cannot separate us. You cannot. We are one together. Uh, we, are ha we have one nature. We coexist together in one, in a mystical union. The mystery of the gospel is this intermingling of Christ with me and me with him. My old identity is completely gone. My new identity is a Christ identity. And my new life is empowered by faith of the Son of God who loves me so much that he gave himself for me and dispenses his life into me. Dispenses his life into me. Let us break bread together. He dispenses his life into me. Mm-hmm. I receive this revelation that I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. I am, I am my beloved and belo my beloved is mine. We are one together um, in a mystical union. Uh, we coexist together as one. Christ in me is the, is the expectation of walking in all the glory of Christ because we are one. We are one together. My old life was completely crucified and died of the cross. The new life I live is no longer mine, but Christ lives his life through me. Yeah, and he dispenses his life in me. And because he dispenses his life in me, there is no limitation. 
I, I receive the wisdom of Christ. I receive the understanding of Christ. I walk in the power of Christ. I walk in the grace of Christ. Wherever Christ is, I can be. Wherever I am, he, he is. Um, I am one with him. There's an indivisib indivisible union between Christ and my myself. My identity, my consciousness is of that of Christ in me. I live the life of Christ in the earth. Christ lives his life through me. Hallelujah. And dispenses his life through me. Not only am I his righteousness and having his nature, uh, I am in union with him. I am in union with him. Hallelujah. I am in union with him. I don't need to ascend. I don't need to descend. I am wherever I am, he is. Wherever he is, I am. There is no limitation in my movement. There is no part of the universe that I cannot go. There is nothing I cannot do because uh, I can do all things because Christ infuses his life in me. The only limitation that exists in me is the limitation that exists in Christ. And there is no limitation in Christ. Therefore, there is no a limitation in me. Hallelujah. I am a son of God by virtue of the fact that I'm in union with Christ. I can't be anything less than I am uh, because Christ can never be anything less than he is. Glory to your name, Jesus. Thank you. 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 There's no limitation to the operation of the Holy Spirit in me because Christ did not function with a limitation of the spirit he operate he walked in the spirit without measure so therefore there is no in hindrance there's no limitation of the holy spirit in me the spirit expresses himself freely through me he thinks through my mind he speaks through my lips because i am one with christ i am one with christ hallelujah i am one with christ amen 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 um two more things i want us to touch on um, let's look at um, Romans chapter 7, verse 4. As a consequence of um, his presence in you and I, um, Romans 7, verse 4 says, So my dear brothers and sisters, the same principle applies to your partnership with God. For you died to your first husband, the law, by being co-crucified with the body of the Messiah. So you are now free to marry another, the one who raised you from the dead, so that you may now bear spiritual fruit for God so that you may now bear. We are empowered to bear fruit for God uh, because we are one with Christ. We are married to Christ. So I can bear the fruit of the Spirit because the Spirit lives in me and I'm one with Him. Um, it is not natural fruit. It is not physical fruit. It is not emotional fruit. It is not fruit that is the product of willpower. But as I yield... As I yield to, as I yield to the life of Christ in me, then I can bear the fruit of the Spirit. Okay, uh, in abundance. It's God's pleasure that I bear fruit and bear much fruit, and you bear fruit and bear much fruit, uh, as a result of your union uh, with Him. Um, we can bear fruit because of our union with Christ. Hallelujah. We can bear fruit because of our union with Christ. So we yield to His presence. Uh, we yield to his presence. So the fruit of the Spirit is not a taxing thing. It, it, the fruit of the Spirit is a natural byproduct of my yieldedness to the, um, to the Christ within me, to the life of Christ within me. Yeah, It is because of his life that I can bear fruit. Just like a, a, a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Because I abide in Christ, therefore I freely bear the fruit of the spirit hallelujah i freely you and i freely bear the fruit of the spirit because we we view ourselves we live from that place of union and therefore we will bear fruit more fruit and much fruit hallelujah hallelujah i am married to christ so that just like marriage produces fruit um, it uh, produces new life. My marriage to Christ, uh, my marriage to Christ, uh, you know, my marriage to Christ, he, he is the one that, that infuses life in me. Uh, the womb of my life bears the fruit of Christ. He infuses life in me. He infuses life in me. And therefore, I bear fruit as a, a natural consequence of me living in this place of intoxicating union. 
Let us eat together. Hallelujah. Let us take this confession together. I yield freely and fully to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit. I yield freely and fully to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, every craving of my self-life, I abandon. I live freely and fully to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, the Holy Spirit within me produces within me divine love in all its varied expressions. It is not uh, a struggle for me because through my union with Christ, I yield to the Spirit. I give Him room. And therefore, divine love in all its very varied expressions. I have the capacity to love the unlovable because divine love finds expression through me. Joy overflows through my life. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Peace that subdues every circumstance. The peace of God mounts guard over my heart because I yield to the life of Christ. Nothing moves me from my place of security in Christ because uh, the life of God in me infuses peace, patience that endures, kindness in action, a life full of virtue, faith that prevails, gentleness of heart, and strength of the Spirit. Strength of the Spirit. There are no limits to my capacity to operate in these virtues because I yield myself. I yield myself <clears throat> to the Holy Spirit. I yield myself to the life of Christ within me. I yield myself to the life of Christ within me. I am married to, to Christ. And therefore, I bear spiritual fruit in abundance. I bear spiritual fruit in abundance. I bear spiritual fruit in abundance. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah, I yield to the life of Christ. I yield to the life of Christ. Satan will not move me out of my place. Pressures will not move me out of my place of peace in him, of joy in him, of love in him, of, of, of gentleness in him, of self-control in him, of faithfulness in him hallelujah amen and lastly having understood that we are a new man in christ having understood that we have his rightness having understood our place of union and and fruitfulness um, i want us to open to ephesians 1 22 uh, and speak about our place of authority um, as as sons of God that have matured in this understanding. Remember, we've talked about Rosh Hashanah, we've talked about the shift, the divine reset, we've talked about the Lord leading us into, um, into a new place, um, leaving the old so that we can fully enter the new. Well, this is what the new is. From that place of understanding who we are, we can function uh, as the ecclesia in the earth. It says in verse 22 that God has put all things God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Okay? So the authority God has made God has put all things under the authority of Christ. But the reason why everything is put under the authority of Christ, is for the benefit of the church, okay? So the church is the one that wields this authority of Christ, okay? Christ wasn't given authority as God. He was given authority as a man exalted um, by the Father on behalf of all of humanity. So we are in him. And that is why at his resurrection, he said, um, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, you go, okay? We're going in his authority, because he received that authority on behalf of humanity, okay? And it says that um, the church is his body, is made full and complete by Christ, who fills everywhere 
with his presence. There is no sphere that Christ is not present. He's not just present as the omnipotent God, omnipresent God. He's present as the Christ, meaning that that mandate of governance, that mandate of government in every sphere is a mandate that Christ has obtained for the church, meaning that you and I as the church, there is, there is no sphere that we are not meant to function in the authority of the King Christ, okay? So everywhere he, he, he functions as, as King, he does it through the church because the authority received as Christ, um, he received on behalf of the church, on behalf of the church. The Christ dimension is for the benefit of the church, not for the benefit of God, um, for the benefit of the last Adam, for the benefit of the race of heavenly beings just as, or just like himself, just like himself. Let us eat together. Mm. Yeah, so we recollect, we recollect, um, we, we recollect, we recount what he has done for us and we proclaim to ourselves first and foremost and to all principalities and powers that Christ fills everything, everywhere with his presence. And he has been given authority over all things for the benefit of the church. He has been given authority over all things for my benefit. He has been given authority over all things for my benefit. He has been given authority over all things for my benefit. He has been given authority over all spheres, over all systems, over all nations, over all, over all kingdoms, over all domains. For my benefit so i stand <clears throat> in the authority of christ and i wield that authority even from this place this exalted place of eden i wield the authority of christ over every sphere that the lord has placed me in over every jurisdiction every company um every um mm -hmm, every career space every mountain every nation. I wield the authority of Christ. And I say, in the name of the Lord Jesus, you bow. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I give voice to the will of God in this sphere. You open up to me as a son of God. You open up to me as a son of God. I say, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Every everlasting door, every door um, that, that has been, uh, that has been, um, that has been uh, structured um, according to to the, the God of this world and the princes of this age. I say, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. I walk through these doors in the name of the Lord Christ and you, give, you yield to me. You yield to me because I bring, I give voice to the kingdom of God. I am here to establish the kingdom. So I, I speak the mind of God into this situation, into every situation, into every sphere that he has given me uh, an assignment and I say yield to me bow in the name of the Lord Jesus to the Lord Christ for I come in his name and I come in his authority our father we're just so thankful we're thankful we're thankful because we rule and reign with you even now we're thankful because we are exalted and we sit in heavenly places in you even now we are thankful for the glorious grace that has been extended uh, to the ecclesia through the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're thankful, Lord God, because we are new in you. Uh, we are one with you. We are righteous as you are righteous. We have the same authority. So we are indeed the body of Christ as you, Lord, are our head. Thank you for this new season. Thank you for this new day. Thank you, O God, because all creation celebrates our emergence and our revel rev revelation as the sons of God. Thank you, O God, because our union with you is forever. Our union with you is forever. Nothing can ever separate us from your love. Nothing can ever separate us from the fruit of redemption. Nothing can ever separate us from the love of God. Thank you for the glorious liberty of the sons of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
and amen. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, have a happy and uh, a joyous uh, new year. Praise the Lord. God bless you. High Life, we advance.